In this video, I would like to show you how to score the CCUSA tournament games using the CCUSA app. First and foremost, of course, you need the CCUSA app, which is now available on the iOS App Store, as well as the Google Play. From this screen, we'll basically go and start scoring. Let's go to the menu and click score. As you can see, it brings us to the login screen. For you to score any of the CCUSA tournament games, you need to be logged in with your CCUSA account. If you do not have an account, you can use your email and password and log in um, or register if you do not have any. Uh, in my case, I do have an email and password which I use to register with CCUSA. So that's the one that I'm gonna use here. As you can see from this screen, that once I log in, I'll basically see all the games that are scheduled for today. Um, and the one that I'm gonna start scoring is the first one that we see, which is Mountain Region B versus Pacific Region. Uh, all I have to do here is click Start Scoring. When clicking this, you'll see a screen which asks us to pick players. On this page, I can see all the players listed for both the teams. Let's start selecting the players, uh, the playing 11. And as and when I select a player, you'll see that the background color changes and the number on top for that team also changes. So I'll go ahead and select the 11 players. I confirm on top that MRB has 11. Let's go to the Pacific and start selecting their 11. You would have noticed that as soon as I selected 11 players, the toss button showed up here. As and when you have selected the minimum number of players required to play the game, that's when the toss button would appear. And this is selected by the tournament by league admin. For this tournament, the minimum number of players for a game is 11. And so as and when I selected 11 players for both the teams, only then the toss button would show up. So now, now that the toss button is there, let's go ahead and click it. This is a screen where you can choose the toss winner and toss decision as the screen says. Uh, let's say that Pacific region won the toss and they chose batting. From this screen, we'll just say start scoring. As you can see, we have two tabs on top scoring and scorecard for most of the time will be in the scoring screen which is where we'll be able to score ball by ball but you also have access to scorecard which is a second tab here um, it provides access to the full scorecard right from the scoring screen for now let's go back to the scoring page and select our striker adil and the runner would be prajesh let's say the bowler is datta and say okay this is our main scoring screen let's talk a few minutes about how the scoring screen is laid out on top you see the two teams that are playing with uh, an asterisk next to the team which is batting here pacific team is batting so it's a asterisk is next to them uh, we see the score is zero for zero on the mountain region side we have no balls bowled yet out of 20 overs adil is on strike with an asterisk next to it Brijesh the runner and Tata prakash bowling from this screen, it's super easy to score. All you have to do is click any of the buttons from the button pad and that will be scored. For example, let's say one run was scored off the first ball. I just hit one and that's it, one run is scored. You can see the number of balls been updated, the total score for Pacific updated and the overall bowling number updated as well. Let's click a few buttons to see how the scoring would be. Let's say it was a dot ball, I hit zero and say a boundary. And now let's say a case where a white ball was balled. All I have to do is click the extra screen. You will notice that there are all the options related to extras on this screen. Wide, and then you will see plus one in the bracket, which means that the run associated with a wide delivery is already included by selecting this button. You do not have to se select additional runs. So let's select wide, which already has plus one in it, and then hit okay. You can see that a wide is denoted with a yellow with WD written in it. You would see the number of deliveries have not been updated, but the total is updated correctly. Let's go ahead and hit, select another extra, but this time let's say it was a wide and the batsman ran one more run, in which case the wide plus one is already selected and I'll just hit additional one run. You would see that that gets two runs, one for the wide delivery and one for the batsman when they ran. 
However, you'll also notice that the striker has changed from Bridges to Adil because it automatically knows that when an extra run was run, the batsman would swap. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and select a few more deliveries. Um, let's give a few more runs a dot ball. This screen basically asks the user or the scorer to confirm that it's an over. So it says over up and we just have to say okay after all the score has been confirmed with uh, others. This screen shows you all the bowlers that have bowled so far. In our case, it's only Datta Prakash who has bowled. So let's select next bowler and say Krishna and we're going to say okay. We continue scoring and let's say we want a, a, a wicket falls. So all we have to do is click wicket and you'll be given options to say whether the wicket was bowled, caught and bowled, LBW, caught, run out, stumped, hit wicket, obstruction or timeout or hurt. Let's say it was a run out. So we'll click run out and say the batsman out was Adil, run out by Donicky on the striker's end. Now, this is where the option is for you to select whether the run out was of a wide delivery, a no ball, buy, leg buy, or just a regular delivery. In our case, let's say it was a regular delivery. So we'll say extra is none. And the run out happened while they were running the second run. In which case I would select one because they completed one run. Let's say, okay select our next batsman to be J and say okay. You would notice that the app already knows who should be on strike based on how the runout happened. So in this case J should be on strike as a new batsman because they got run out while running the second run. Now let's continue and score a few more and have another wicket this time bold. Since the batsman who would be bold is on strike. It won't ask which batsman got out. It already knows who the batsman is. So all we have to do is select the next batsman, in which case this is Neeraj, and then we move on. Again, it's over up. And you would see that now we have Datta Prakash and Krishna Verma both listed here as the bowlers who have bowled. You can now select the next bowler. In my case, say Nikan and continue. Let's have a few more deliveries, have another wicket. This time we're gonna say caught and all we have to do is, who was it caught by? Let's say hover. And it asks you whether the batsman crossed or not. Um, again, the app is asking this so that it can uh, know which batsman would be on strike. Now let's say the batsman did cross and the next batsman is Abhijit. You will notice that since the batsman crossed, it would be Jai who would be on strike. Okay, so without us doing anything extra, we are just having the app do all the stuff for us. Let's have a few more deliveries. And then you will notice on this screen that the next bowler is automatically selected to the bowler who bowled the previous over. That is because normally bowlers bowl in tandem. So, uh, until that spell is over, they would be coming one after the other and the app smartly picks up the previous bowler so that you have minimum number of taps to continue. So that's the case in our case as well. So Krishna is coming back and let's say, okay. Okay, now say for example, which is very rare, but due to rain, the match had to be shortened to um, instead of 20, say five overs, just for our example. So for cases like that, where due to late start or due to rain, the game was shortened to um, fewer overs, all we have to do is click more, go to updated overs, select say five in our case, and then say, okay. And you would notice now that it says three out of five overs have been bold. From that point on, let's do a few more. Let's have another wicket. This time we're gonna say, um, caught and bowled and it automatically knows it was caught by whom because it's always the bowler's name we can select whether batsman crossed in this case let's say no continue and select the next batsman let's do extras but this time we'll say no ball in case of no ball 
you will notice that we have the option of selecting additional runs just like wide but say it was a boundary of a no ball and then if it is off the bat you won't select any of the buys or leg buys but if it was say buys you would select here so let's continue that and you would notice that the the ball by ball update shows here no ball plus four which is off a buy um, let's finish off this over let's go to our last over and let's say this time I made a mistake of scoring three runs however it was only two runs that they took and this is my mistake while scoring well not to worry all we have to do is click undo that delivery gets taken off the score gets updated the ball gets updated and now I get to correct that mistake by saying two remember this is a very powerful tool undo can actually un allow you to undo the entire inning but we recommend that you do not do undo more than one over that way you are not messing up the other balls that were correctly scored okay <clears throat> let's take another example in which the batsman ran three runs but one out of which was short so basically we should be scoring two but if I do score two let's do that so Jay um, is on strike right now and let's say he hit and ran three runs but only two were scored so if I score two which is the right score to add you would see that Jay is on strike whereas actually it should be Amin in this case what you need to do is you would, should mark two runs which is what the right score to be added is go to more and say swap striker and you would see now that Amin is correctly on strike now that way the app gets the right score but you get the option to kind of match what actually happened on the field let's have three balls remaining let's bowl them out dot and one this screen basically shows you the innings inning is up uh, you have a target of 47 runs in five overs you can still undo and correct the last ball of the over if there was any mistake however once the inning is up we won't be able to undo anything from this inning so let's say 47 is the right uh, target uh, in five overs and let's say okay and you will see that now the same screen comes up again but this time for the second inning so I can select the striker the runner and the bowler let's say okay you can see we are back to the screen which we used however the screen now shows that mountain region is on strike because it has the asterisk uh, it shows that there are currently zero of zero runs scored the target is 47 of 30 deliveries so you can see all of these details are currently available on the screen if it is a second inning uh, as we have already covered all of these number pad will now allow us to kind of score ball by ball however if there is a dedicated scorer this would be straightforward when the scorer would continue scoring and finish the entire uh, match and then that should be it however what if a team player is scoring while the team was batting and now the inning is up and they need to go on the field so what do we do in that case well this app allows a, a, a unique feature which is called a scoring handoff all we have to do is you don't need to share your phone you don't need to share your username and password with anyone else all you do is shut off the phone go on the field and ask someone from the other team to score how does that happen let's try to simulate this so I am going to sign out and I'm on the main screen now so let's assume that you took your phone with you and you are on the field someone else comes in opens up the app sees the screen goes to score sees the login screen and this time I'm going to use a different account and this is assuming that it's a different user with a different uh, username and password let's go sign in and you will notice that the same match that we were scoring as user right now which is mountain region B versus Pacific shows that there are two options available for me who is the different user one is to copy from where the previous user left it which is a button which says copy from user or I can start from beginning which says start scoring 
make sure that you do not click in this say scenario start scoring start scoring is when you want to start fresh from the beginning in our case we just want to pick up from where the previous scorer left so all we have to do is click copy from user and there we go as you can see we are brought back to the same screen from where the previous user had left and we can continue this just like we did in the first inning there we go now let's try to finish this game as quickly as we can okay this basically shows us that mountain region b won by 10 wickets it allows us to select a provisional man of the match and let's select yeah okay and there is a button called finalize again just like the end of first inning you can still undo to fix the last delivery or so but once you finalize you won't be able to fix anything in on this screen um, however, one thing to remember is that once you finalize the scorecard doesn't mean that all the statistics for the players as well as standings will be updated. This scorecard needs to be approved by the league admin. So as and when the league admin approves this, all the details from this scorecard will be updated for the player statistics as well as standings. For now, all I have to do is finalize, which basically says the scorecard has been finalized. We press OK and that should do it. I hope you realize uh, how easy it is to score ball by ball for a game that's going on live on the field for you as a scorer. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.